Can anybody predict which way the crypto market is going? Up, down, sideways? Well, if you were listening to me last week, then you know the answer is maybe. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Cryptonomics, Principles of Cryptocurrency and Investing. I just want to give you an addendum to last week's episode and tell you a few little tricks, some consistent patterns that have been pointed out to me that I've noticed just so you can get your mind primed once again. So when this situation comes up, you're going to have a much better idea of what to do. Now, thank you all so much for sharing this on Facebook and other social media. I've seen people out there sharing it and I really appreciate it. I appreciate your help starting this new channel. Now let's get into it. Quick disclaimer, once again, I'm not trying to tell you what to do with your money. I don't know what you should do with your money. I'm not trying to give you financial advice. I'm just trying to tell you my own reasoning for my decisions. Let's talk about the history of prices in crypto, about the history of the cycle of bubbles. <laughs> We go back to 2011 and we can see that the price went up from around $1 to $35 then trailed back down to around $2. We look at the chart in 2013, it started around $15, went all the way up to $200 and then bottomed out around $70. In late 2013, the price was around $100, went up over $1,000 and over many months and ended up going down to around $200. If you just got into it recently, there might be this temptation to think that it's something just like the dot-com bubble, like it surges once and then everybody forgets about that market for years, like the hype dies down and that's it. Now, it's not entirely a different thing, but it is a different thing because crypto is a worldwide market. So it's not likely that we'll just see one bubble and that's it. It's likely that different parts of the world are going to be exposed to it. Different parts, different segments of the population are going to be exposed to it at different times. And so we're likely to see many bubbles. And there's also a lot of manipulation mixed into that as well. Like in 2013, we had the MT Gox bots that were apparently manipulating the market. And there were probably bots involved in 2017 as well. We can tell that regular people don't have a lot of understanding about it from the questions they ask. So when people ask about Bitcoin, who owns it, who invented it, and this sort of thing, who controls it, where does the money come from? And they ask that for steam it as well. So from these questions, we can tell that there's still a low level of understanding. And when these things become more user-friendly, there's probably going to be a huge surge again. And each time it increases in user-friendliness, more people will jump on board. My point is, we can expect that there's going to be this market cycle over and over. There's going to be booms and busts in Bitcoin and crypto as the market gets manipulated over and over and more people get involved. Another key pattern, which is being pointed out to me by my friend Kosh and his teacher Scott of Trade Crypto Live, is called putting on the boosters. So what you notice is a coin will go up a lot over a sustained period, say two months, and then suddenly it will go up much quicker in a couple of days or a week. Then it will crash. So when they put on the boosters, you know that the rally is nearly over, or at least it's likely. So I saw this with Dash in 2017. It was building basically the entire year, from $15 at the start of the year, around December 15th, it was about $900. Within five days, it got up to $1,500. 
then it crashed. I also saw it with EOS. In the middle of March 2018, EOS was around $4 or 55,000 Satoshis. April 23rd, it was around $11, 120,000 Satoshis. But by April 29th, it was up to $21, $22, about 230,000 Satoshis. So it close to doubled within that six day period. And then, of course, a few days later it crashed and went into a bear market. This ties back to what I was talking about last week about when you start getting lightheaded and you're wondering, is this gonna make me a millionaire? Because that's what a lot of people are feeling when the boosters get turned on. Now, you know a little bit better. When the boosters get turned on, you're not gonna be thinking about turning yourself into a millionaire. You're gonna be thinking a little more about protecting what you already have. As they say, first rule of making money is don't lose money. Preservation of capital. Another pattern that I've noticed, which is very consistent, and some of you might have seen this come up on social media with the memes talking about the after Christmas sell-off. Now, some people say this is due to Chinese New Year because the Chinese want to take some money out of the market and give it to their friends. I don't think that's the real reason. All I know is the pattern is consistent. If you look back the last three or four years, you can see the market has gone down sometime after Christmas. So here's what you should do right now. Open up your calendar, your Google Calendar or whatever you have. Set a reminder for December 20th to tell you that the market is likely to go down in the next couple of weeks. And I know you're probably thinking, I oh, you know, I'll set it later or something like that. Do it now. Do it now. Please do it now. Open up your calendar and do it now. You can thank me later. So last week, I was talking about the social media sentiment. And when it gets into a hype, you can really notice on social media. That's when people start coming out of the woodwork and the new traders start telling you what geniuses they are and the kind of predictions that they make. After the crash, of course, that talk dies down a little bit. But what you'll notice is on every rally, people start getting excited again and they start saying, oh, is this the next rally? Like, is the market, is the bull market returning? One key idea that I got from Ed Bugos of the Dollar Vigilante is that when that talk finally dies down, or when Bitcoin or crypto start to move up without any fanfare. That's when you can get a good idea that the organic growth is really beginning. That it's not just about hype, it's actually about interest, genuine interest and investment. The point is, if you're trying to time the market, which obviously is not an easy thing to do, but if you're trying to do it, when you notice that Bitcoin or crypto move up without a fanfare, then you'll have a better idea that it's going to be a sustained rally and you're buying actually quite close to the bottom. Thank you so much for listening to Cryptonomics. I hope you find those tips helpful and I hope your mind is primed when those situations come up so you get a little insight on the probabilities of what's going to happen next. Now, please and thank you. Share this on social media so your friends can benefit as much as you have. I really do appreciate it when you share this. It uh, fills me with hope and, and gratitude. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. And remember, most importantly, stay grateful. <laughs>